Brought to you by wikivd.com Sherrod Brown Sherrod Campbell Brown is an American politician and author who is a senior United States Senator from Ohio in office since January 3, 2007. Brown is a member of the Democratic Party. Before his election to the Senate, he was a member of the United States House of Representatives, representing Ohio's 13th Congressional District from 1993 to 2007. He previously served as the Ohio Secretary of State and as a member of the Ohio House of Representatives. Brown defeated two-term Republican incumbent Mike Duane in the 2006 Senate election and was re-elected in 2012 defeating State Treasurer Josh Mandel. In the Senate, he was chairman of the Agriculture Subcommittee on Hunger Nutrition and Family Farms and the Banking Subcommittee on Economic Policy and is also a member of the Committee on Finance, Committee on Veterans Affairs and Select Committee on Ethics. Beginning in January the 2015, at the start of the 114th Congress, Brown became the ranking Democratic member on the Committee on Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs. Early Life Education and Academic Career Brown was born in Mansfield, Ohio, the son of Emily and Charles Gailey Brown, M.D. He was named after his maternal grandfather. He became an Eagle Scout in 1967. He received a Bachelor of Arts degree in Russian Studies from Yale University in 1974. At Yale, he lived in Davenport College. While in college, Brown volunteered for liberal politicians such as George McGovern. He went on to receive a Master of Arts degree in Education and a Master of Public Administration degree from Ohio State University in Columbus, Indiana 1979 and 1981 respectively. He taught at the Mansfield Branch campus of Ohio State University from 1979 to 1981. He backpacked in India during the emergency imposed by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. Early political career During his senior year in college, Brown was recruited by a local Democratic leader to run for OEO's State House. Brown served as a state representative in Ohio from 1974 to 1982. At the time of his election to the Ohio House he was the youngest person elected to that body. In 1982 Brown ran for Ohio Secretary of State to succeed Anthony J. Celebrezze Jr. Brown won a four-way Democratic primary that included Dennis Kucinich, then defeated Republican Virgil Brown in the general election. In 1986 Brown won re-election, defeating Vincent C. Campanella. As Secretary of State, Brown focused on voter registration outreach. In 1990, Brown lost re-election in a heated campaign against Republican Bob Taft. Elections In 1992 Brown moved from Mansfield to Lorain, Ohio and won a heavily contested Democratic primary for the open seat for Ohio's 13th district, located in the western and southern suburbs of Cleveland. After eight-term incumbent Don Pease announced his retirement, the Democratic-leaning district gave him an easy win over the little-known Republican Margaret R. Mueller. He was re-elected six times. Tenure the Democrats lost the long-held House majority in the 1994 elections, and Democrats remained in the minority for the remainder of Brown's tenure. As ranking member of the Energy and Commerce Health Subcommittee Brown successfully advocated for increased funding to fight tuberculosis. In 2001, the Republican-controlled legislature considered redrawing Brown's district. Some top Democrats urged Brown to relocate and take on fellow Democrat James Traficant after he defected when he voted to elect Republican Dennis Hastert as Speaker of the U.S. House. 
In 2005, Brown led the Democratic effort to block the Central American Free Trade Agreement. For many months Brown worked as whip on the issue securing Democratic no votes and seeking Republican allies. After several delays, the House of Representatives finally voted on CAFTA after midnight on July 28, 2005, which ended in passage by one vote. He opposed an amendment to OEO's constitution that banned same-sex marriage. Brown was also one of the few U.S. representatives to vote against the Defense of Marriage Act in 1996. Committee Assignments Brown was the ranking minority member on the House Energy and Commerce Committee's Health Subcommittee. He also served on the Subcommittee on Telecommunications and the Internet and the Subcommittee on Commerce, Trade and Consumer Protection, while serving on the House International Relations Committee. He was also a member of the Subcommittee on Asia and the Pacific. Foreign Policy Brown opposed the Iraq War and voted against the Iraq Resolution as a House representative. He voted against the $87 billion war budgetary supplement. He also voted for redeploying U.S. troops out of Iraq by March 2008. In 2008, Brown joined 91 other senators in voting for the Iraq and Afghanistan war funding, unemployment benefits extension and GIB bill which required the Department of Defense to provide a timetable for achieving security in Iraq provided education funding for veterans extended unemployment compensation and appropriated funds to combat drug trafficking, reduce Medicaid fraud assist victims of natural disasters, and fund the Department of Defense. In 2012 he co-sponsored a resolution to oppose any policy that would rely on containment as an option in response to the Iranian nuclear threat while also joined by partisan effort to urge Obama administration to step up pressure including strengthening sanctions cooperating with U.S. allies and military readiness to prevent Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons. In 2015, Brown co-sponsored an amendment to the budget which unanimously approved by the Senate that would reimpose sanctions on Iran if it violated the interim or final agreement that has paused its nuclear activities from U.S. House of Representatives to Senate Sherrod Brown strongly supported the Taiwan Relations Act and the six assurances as cornerstones of United States-Taiwan relations. Weeks after the 2014 Hong Kong class boycott campaign, an umbrella movement broke out which demanded genuine universal suffrage among other goals. The Congressional Executive Commission on China Chair Senator Brown and co-chair U.S. Rep. Chris Smith along with bipartisan Senators Ben Cardan, Marco Rubio, Roger Wicker, Dianne Feinstein, Jeff Merkley and Democratic leader of the U.S. House of Representatives Nancy Pelosi, Congressman Dan Lipinski and Frank Wolf introduced Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act which would update the United States-Hong Kong Policy Act of 1992 and U.S. commitment to Hong Kong's freedom and democracy. Hong Kong's autonomy and freedoms are under threat from China. We must strongly support the universal rights of the people of Hong Kong, including free and fair elections in 2017 and beyond, Brown said. Anti-terrorism he voted in favor of the 2012 NDAA that sparked controversy over indefinite detention of U.S. citizens. In January 2016, Senator Brown introduced a bill in Congress which would restrict ISIS financing by authorizing tough new sanctions on foreign financial institutions that knowingly facilitate financial transactions with ISIS and other terrorist threats. His bill also called for tightening international passport regulations and additional screening of those attempting to enter the U.S. on certain types of visas. Another part of his bill would secure grant funding 
to state and local law enforcement agencies to develop specialized anti-terrorism investigation and combat programs and to train first responders in the event of an active shooter or a terrorist attack to monitor possible terrorist activity on the Internet. He proposed better cyber training to identify and track extremists, such as the couple behind the mass shooting in San Bernardino, California. We need to ensure that those on the front lines protecting us have all the tools they need to respond to threats and to root out these terrorists at home and abroad, Brown said. He also renewed his call for closing the terrorist gun loophole to stop individuals who are known or suspected terrorists including those on the no-fly list and homegrown extremists from purchasing deadly firearms. If you're too dangerous to fly or too dangerous to purchase an assault weapon, period, said Brown. Service members and veterans in 2015 Senators Brown and Bob Menendez co-authored the Military Families Credit Reporting Act to safeguard financial security for service members while deployed on active duty, and requested specific information and feedback to help ensure deployed military personnel have the tools they need to protect their credit. In 2014 Brown introduced the Gold Star Fathers Act of 2014 a bill that would expand preferred eligibility for federal jobs to the fathers of certain permanently disabled or deceased veterans. Brown said that, when a service member is killed in action or permanently and totally disabled, the government should do its part to be there for grieving parents no matter if the fathers or mothers. In 2015 Senators Brown and U.S. Rep. Tim Ryan introduced legislation to ensure veteran students serving in the armed forces and their qualifying dependents can attain priority enrollment at four-year colleges or universities so that they can finish their degrees before their federal GIB benefits expire. Brown said we must invest in and train our men and women when they return to their communities. Energy and Environment Senator Brown co-sponsored bipartisan legislation to restrict the export of electronic waste, help boost the domestic recycling industry foster innovation, reduce the number of counterfeit electronics from countries like China and support efforts to recover rare earth materials found in electronics. He supports research and development on clean and renewable energy including new fuel cell and offshore wind energy production and its manufacturing supply chain in the U.S. to ensure safe and reliable fuel source. Gun rights Brown consistently votes in favor of gun control which has earned him AF rating from the National Rifle Association. He has repeatedly criticized Congress Republicans and the NRA for making little to no effort in gun law reform. Brown called the Republican legislature in Ohio lunatics for introducing a concealed carry bill that would allow individuals to carry guns into airplane terminals before security police buildings, private airplanes, and daycares. In the wake of the 2016 Orlando nightclub shooting, Brown participated in the Chris Murphy gun control filibuster. A few weeks later Brown voted for the Feinstein Amendment which would have banned any individual on the terrorist watch list from buying a gun. In response to the 2017 Las Vegas Strip shooting Brown stated, I have always respected the rights of hunters, collectors and other law-abiding gun owners, and no one intends to take away their guns. But when one man can slaughter more, then 50 innocent people in a matter of minutes it's clear something has to be done to protect Americans from gun violence. He supported Dianne Feinstein's efforts to ban bump stocks in response to the Las Vegas shooting. Bank and Finance Industry In February 2013 conservative commentator George F. Will wrote in support of Brown's proposal 
to break up consolidated banks and finance industry conglomerates ending too big to fail by restoring the Glass-Steagall Act. In 2016 amid Panama Papers scandal around the globe, Senators Brown and Elizabeth Warren urged the Treasury Department to investigate whether U.S. individuals were involved in possible tax avoidance and misconduct associated with the Panama-based law firm Mossack Fonseca. Stimulus spending In 2009 when the vote on the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act came down to just a few votes, Brown was attending services for his deceased mother. The White House provided a plane in order to fly him back to vote for the bill, when it was determined that no commercial flight would make it on time. Although most senators voted shortly after 5.30 p.m. the 60th, and final vote was not cast until 10.46 p.m. by Sen. Sherrod Brown. Health Brown was instrumental in passing the Food and Drug Administration Food Safety Modernization Act of 2010, due to serious environmental issues and pollution in China as well as serious food safety incidents, including pet foods and milk among others. Senator Brown in 2013 criticized the Department of Agriculture over inadequate process of no routine inspections and no country of origin labeling for meats from that country. Given the well-documented shortcoming of the Chinese food safety system, we shouldn't allow unmarked meat into our markets that is processed in Chinese facilities that are not subject to food safety inspection, Brown said. This action could endanger the health and safety of American consumers and potentially undermines confidence in our nation's food safety standards, as people are unable to identify whether things are from Chinese processes or not. Brown highlighted the egregious record of China and demanded additional actions from USDA and Food Safety and Inspection Service for those problems as American consumers deserve to be fully informed of their product choices. While as the ranking Democrat on U.S. House Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on Health Rep, Brown authored the Children's Hospital's Education and Research Act of 1998 which first proposed the Children's Hospital's Graduate Medical Education Program. In 2015 Senator Brown led 31 colleagues to seek continued and $30 million increase funding in fiscal year 2016 which can benefit seven institutions in Ohio, among others, as the water crisis in Flint, Michigan also raised similar public health concern in Granville and Sebring, Ohio. Senator Brown in 2016 introduced legislation that would force the federal government to step in when cities and states fail to warn residents about lead-contaminated drinking water and to give OEO's school districts money to test it. Healthcare In 2007 Brown and Sam Brown back sponsored an amendment to the Food and Drug Administration Amendments Act of 2007. President George W. Bush signed the bill in September 2007. The amendment established a prize as an incentive for companies to invest in new drugs and vaccines for neglected tropical diseases. It awards a transferable priority review voucher to any company that obtains approval for or treatment for a neglected tropical disease. This provision adds to the market-based incentives available for the development of new medicines for developing world diseases in the developing world among them malaria, tuberculosis, and African sleeping sickness. The prize had been proposed by Duke University faculty members Henry Grabowski, Jeffrey Moe, and David Ridley in their 2006 health affairs paper Developing Drugs for Developing Countries. Brown supported the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act voting for it in December 2009, and he voted for the Health Care and Education Reconciliation Act of 2010.
LGBT rights. Brown is an advocate of equal rights for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. He also voted against prohibiting same sex couples from adopting children in Washington, D.C., and received a perfect score from the Human Rights Campaign. On November 30, 2010, Brown made a contribution to the It Gets Better project from the Senate floor. And on December 18, 2010, he voted in favor of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell Repeal Act of 2010. Ideology In 2011, in the National Journal's annual rankings, Brown tied with eight other members for the title of the most liberal member of Congress. Education in 2015 Senator Brown pushed for national charter school reform with more accountability and transparency to ensure tax dollars are spent on education rather than profit. Trade Brown has criticized free trade with China and other countries. In a 2006 Washington Post article, Brown argued against free trade on the grounds that labor activism was responsible for the growth of the U.S. middle class and that the U.S. economy is harmed by trade relations with countries that lack the kind of labor regulations that have resulted from that activism. In 2011 the Columbus Dispatch noted that Brown loves to rail against international trade agreements. Brown's book Myths of Free Trade argues that an unregulated global economy is a threat to all of us. He recommends adopting measures that would allow for emergency tariffs protect by America laws, including those that give preference to minority and women-owned businesses, and hold foreign producers to American labor and environmental standards. Brown was the co-author and sponsor of a bill that would officially declare China a currency manipulator and require the Department of Commerce to impose countervailing duties on Chinese imports. China's policy on devaluing its currency against the dollar, an export subsidy has damaged American manufacturers and taken away American jobs. According to reports unveiled in 2012 China's cheating in the auto parts trade resulted in more than 1.6 million American jobs at risk. Senator Brown addressed China's predatory trading practices on American industry and called for action against China doesn't play fair. He tried to impose tariffs on China. In May 2016, Senator Brown praised Hillary Clinton's in-depth plan to enforce regulations and laws on trade, such as rules of origin triple the enforcement budgets at the Department of Commerce and the International Trade Commission in how to bring manufacturing to America. Employment In 2012, Senator Brown urged the Department of Defense to comply with a rule that requires military service members to wear clothes and boots made in the U.S. rather than in China. If it's taxpayer dollars it should help American workers and American businesses pure and simple. Our men and women in the uniform are fighting for their country and deserve to fight in quality uniforms and boots that are made in the USA. Brown said. In 2016 Senator Brown criticized Donald Trump for his outsourcing American jobs to China. Elections In August 2005, Brown announced he would not run for the United States Senate seat held by Republican Mike Duane. In October, however, Brown reconsidered his decision. His announcement came shortly after Democrat Paul Hackett stated that he would soon announce his candidacy. On February 13, 2006, Hackett withdrew from the race all, but ensuring that Brown would win the Democratic nomination. In the May 2 primary, Brown won 78.05% of the Democratic vote. His opponent Merrill Samuel Kaiser Jr. received 21.95% of the vote. In the middle of his Senate campaign in April 2006 Brown along 
with John Conyers brought an action against George W. Bush and others alleging violations of the Constitution in the passage of the Deficit Reduction Act of 2005. The case Conyers v. Bush was ultimately dismissed for lack of standing. On November 7, 2006, Brown faced two-term incumbent Senator Mike Dewey in the general election. Brown won the seat, with 56% of the vote to Dewey's 44%. Brown stood for re-election in 2012, defeating opponent Josh Mandel who in 2010 defeated the incumbent state treasurer by 14 points. Mandel raised $2.3 million in the second quarter of 2011 alone to Brown's $1.5 million. Early on, Brown enjoyed a steady lead in the polls. Mandel won the March Republican primary with 63% of the vote. The Washington Post reported that no candidate running for re-election, save Barack Obama, faced more opposition in 2012 by outside groups. As of April 2012, over $5.1 million had been spent on television ads opposing Brown according to data provided by a Senate Democratic campaign operative. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce spent $2.7 million. 60-plus Association, a conservative group that opposes health care reform, spent another $1.4 million. Carl Rove's Crossroads GPS and the Concerned Women for America Legislative Action Committee also spent heavily in the race. In May 2012, Brown hit the campaign trail with West Wing actor Martin Sheen. Controversial remarks In March 2011 Brown came under scrutiny for a Senate floor speech in which he cited the names of Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin while he criticized Republican efforts in Ohio and Wisconsin to mitigate the power of public employee unions to negotiate with taxpayers. In his speech he said, Some of the worst governments that we've ever had. Do you know one of the first things they did? They went after unions. Hitler didn't want unions. Stalin didn't want unions. Mubarak didn't want independent unions. Brown, however, added that he was not comparing the two situations. He later apologized for his speech. Personal life Brown's second wife Connie Schultz is a former newspaper columnist at the Cleveland Plain Dealer, but resigned because being a politician's spouse presented a conflict of interest. She won a Pulitzer Prize for her pungent columns that provided a voice for the underdog. An underprivileged, she is also the author of Life Happens and Dot and His Lovely Wife, in which she describes her experiences as a spouse of a U.S. Senate candidate. Brown was previously married to Lark Retchie from 1979 to 1987. Brown is the father of four children, two from his marriage to Retchie and two children from his marriage to Schultz. He has five grandchildren. On May 18, 2014, Brown was awarded an honorary Doctor of Public Service degree from Otterbein University. Along with his wife, Brown delivered a keynote address at the undergraduate commencement. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?